I think the laws are really very clear that you cannot endanger people's lives like that. And this is an accident, I believe, but I also strongly feel there's a, a high amount of negligence involved. So the state, you know, will have to decide on that. Are you suing? I personally have no plans to file any lawsuit. Do you know if anybody else does? I'm not aware of any at this time. So the Forest Practices Act states that loggers are not supposed to fall trees within 100 feet of people. And they violated the Forest Practices Act. Pacific Lumber has been violating Forest Practices Acts for years now. And California Department of Forestry has been notified of this. We've been doing rallies there. We've had legal people go there lobbying the legislation. And they continue to do nothing about it. Last year, they took away their license for one week and rubber stamp approved every THP that they brought to them. When are we going to stop this destruction? Do we have to be out there every day risking our lives for the destruction to stop? Or just, or we're going to have clear cuts ongoing and then we have mudslides? I don't know what else to do as an activist but to put my life on the line and I feel, I can't speak for other activists, but when the agencies that are supposed to be helping the people aren't doing their jobs, it's up to the people. And I don't know what else we can do. They pretty much gave us a runaround, and we went into the woods, I went into the woods, to hopefully not even have to do anything because CDF would show up and do their investigation, and there would be no operations. But the fact was, they weren't there doing an investigation like they should have been, so, and the trees were still falling. So we went into action. I went into action. <laughs> Will you do it again? Yes. 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 I think I, I would definitely do it again, but I think it's also important for people out there who, who believe in something and have a truth inside them to be able to stand up and voice that and have it be safe. People are allowed to protest and have their lives be safe. So I just encourage everybody to round up and that we're all united as one, us, the loggers, you know, the whole world, we're all together. And that if you have a truth and you want to stand up for justice, that you should do that and you should be safe. Welcome to the It's a Wonderful World Living Room Lockdown. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, this is the Gypsy Free State. And this is the It's a Wonderful World Living Room Lockdown. As you can see, we're all... There's a room for six of us to be locked down here. There's going to be one on either end with a U-lock to the guardrail and all the other people in the middle in case it went for when the police come. <laughs> How long have you been locked down? Well, we've been in position to be locked down here potentially okay. for four days. This action's been going on for seven. And on this past Monday, well, Sunday night into Monday, we prepared for the potentiality that the police might raid us and try and break this up. And uh, we've been alone here and, there, and at other positions on this road and other roads to attempt to preserve the crime scene, what we believe is the murder of David Gypsy Chain up on top of this ridge overlooking uh, the, Bear, the Grizzly Creek State Park. And because uh, we don't believe that the Humboldt County Sheriff's can conduct an independent, unbiased investigation. And we're asking that this crime scene be preserved until an independent investigator can come in. Pacific Lumber, even though they issued a statement saying that they weren't going to log until the investigation was over, came back in this past um, Friday and destroyed um, the crime scene and taken away any evidence there might have been of, of criminal activity taking place up there. And of course, that there there is the potentiality of violations of the Forest Practices Act going on up there. In fact, uh, the California Fish and Game has said that there are violations of Forest Practices Act that have taken place up here. And what David Gypsy Chain was doing when he died was to try to tell the fallers about those violations and request that they stop logging for the day until an investigator could come out from the CDF. And I myself actually talked to the CDF the day before and they assured me that someone would be here the day that David died to do the investigation and there was not. So uh, we're all pretty upset about this whole situation for a very short time actually, only since this past March base camp when I joined and made, began making my contributions in the kitchen um, and worked many, many hours day in and day out at the base camp kitchen this past spring and I've been 
involved with many direct actions ever since then. I've been in the woods an awful lot. I've been in the office an awful lot. I've lo this is my sixth lockdown since March, since I joined this movement. And um, as I've been working really hard, and there's some really wonderful people here. This is the Erosion Ferry. This is what they're doing to keep the logging trucks from coming through. Because that one other guy. Another barricade. Today I've been here for a week. Uh huh. And what has that week been like for you? Fun and frustrating all at the same time. Why don't we start with the frustration and go to the fun? The just the whole situation up here is just frustrating for me because I don't think we should have to do this. But it's like I, I'm just frustrated with pretty much having to go up and down this hill all the time. <laughs> That's pretty much it. What what's been fun for you within the context of your being a warrior, defending these boundaries, what hits? Just everybody here and all the good spirits that are here and all the family and all the love and just what we're doing here, our purpose here. should have its roots, you know, spread out this way. Now, to a great extent, in fact, enough to, to actually hook with all the other different redwood trees in the area, and that's what keeps it, keeps it uh, stable. And so when you take out the other redwood trees in the area, like they did around Luna, then, uh, then you loosen its structure and you... And you uh, it took a lot of work to get some of this barricade material out of the woods. Heavy, heavy, long trees. Spring or something that yeah, door to the road. Footprints of the folks who are keeping this forest land standing. Pompous grass already invading this forest that was cut in the road once before. How much farther to the encampment? Not really that far. <laughs> <laughs> you just go like up that hill, and then it's like maybe a couple, three more hills. I don't know. Three it's it's not that far really. I mean, it's like maybe it's another mile. It's just really maybe, uphill. I doubt it. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll love it. I think when I'll you get out there, I'll walk down to the cars. I think when you get out there, you're gonna love it. <laughs> it's gonna be like go apeshit because it's just so much fun.